All right, y'all, welcome back to Common Arms Channel. Now, today's reaction video is gonna be a uh, different military, so we've been doing a little bit of focus on the United Kingdom and uh, Finland, uh, but recently I've been trying to switch it up, so today we're gonna to be doing the, the Pontifical Swiss Guard. And if you're not familiar with, with what this unit is, it's basically the, the guard unit that, uh, that supports and guards the, the Pope in the Vatican. So it's a pretty pretty interesting. Uh, it's a little bit different from the, the rest of the units and training we've been going over. Now this is something I didn't even uh, consider. Obviously the, the Pope is a very high profile individual, so it makes sense for him to have his own guard, but I didn't really know who, who actually took care of that. I kind of figured it was just like the, the police, but yeah, the Pontifical Swiss Guard is basically uh, a guard unit. Uh, they, I think they, they call themselves like the oldest military unit uh, that's still in existence. But uh, yeah, basically it's uh, around 130. Uh, it's kind of varied between the years, but it's around 120 to 200 individuals. And uh, it started back in 1506. And they've been uh, disbanded a few times, mainly because Rome has been sacked and captured by different militaries. So that, that kind of threw a wrench in, in that whole process. But yeah, even though it's been uh, disbanded, it's been reinstated several times. And uh, even back in 1527, uh, most of the guard actually ended up being killed in a battle. So they actually have fought some battles, which is pretty interesting. So uh, if y'all aren't familiar with them, this video isn't too long, but it gives a pretty good uh, understanding of what they do. Being responsible for the Holy Father's safety is a privilege to us. It makes us proud. We need to train our staff with great care if we want to fulfill such a great responsibility such a great challenge. Pontifical Swiss Guard's history clearly shows the meaning of our motto, fiercely and faithfully. We have been serving the Holy Father and the Catholic Church for more than 500 years. For centuries, Catholic Swiss men have been entrusted with the Holy Father and his residence's safety. Yeah, so like they were saying, they did start in uh, 1506, and it originally, it originally started as uh, basically Swiss mercenaries, and uh, it, it's again it's changed throughout the years. At one point, it was like German mercenaries, but uh, yeah, they, they do try and keep it as like an actual Swiss guard. But yeah, pretty interesting. Obviously, they have a very rich history, and uh, like they were saying, they did fight in some battles, so they do have a, a reputation there. But you can see it's more of a ceremonial thing now. They do have uh, some sort of training. Uh, I think we'll probably see a little more of their training in this video. But uh, yeah, it's very ceremonial, but at the same time they do some sort of tactical training. Because, I mean, the, the threat is there. Uh, they're not really going to be like a huge contingency force. They have the police to sort of supplement them as well. But uh, it's basically just like the, the front line uh, guards for the Pope. So pretty cool. Uh, I think it's interesting how they still wear like, like old uh, style knight armor, like medieval armor. And they have like the Renaissance outfit and they have their halberds. And uh, I actually saw recently in the news they had like they, they had like new helmets donated to the, the Swiss guards. And uh, these helmets were made like lighter, more comfortable. So it's, I mean, it's pretty cool. Even, even people who wear knight's armor and whatnot, they're sort of modernizing a little bit. So yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting to see all this stuff happening behind the scenes that you don't even consider. In order to honor this privilege, the guard is on duty 24-7, 365 days a year. Responsibly, loyally and faithfully. Training is divided into two months. The first part takes place in Isone, in the canton of Ticino, Switzerland, and focuses on the use of weapons, sport, introduction to law, tactical behavior, for instance, how to control a vehicle, self-defense, how to defend ourselves in case of assault. The first part is very specific, then recruits move to Rome. Yeah, so their tactical training, again, it's pretty, um, pretty standard, it looks like. So they have pistol, marksmanship style stuff, and at the same time, they do uh, hand to hand combat as well. So it's pretty much your basics you'd see with most militaries. Uh, I don't know how in-depth they actually go, how proficient they actually do with their marksmanship, but yeah, definitely good skills to know, especially if you're guarding someone that's high profile and important as a Pope. 
Uh, so yeah, it's cool to see that they're getting the actual training as opposed to just being a, a ceremonial thing. Cause uh, I mean, if you'd see them, you'd pretty much think that they're only like ceremonial. I would say, uh, like the, uh, the Queens guard in the United Kingdom, a lot of people don't know that they're you know, actually trained to do other things besides stand pose. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it's just one of those things. Some, some foreigners don't really care. So uh, it's cool to see the behind the scenes of the actual training and some of the work that actually goes into being a uh, Swiss Guard. The second part of the training includes the honor duty, such as the use of halberd, marking time, how to wear the uniform. Afterwards, we introduce people and places. It's important for them to know the Vatican. In order to join the guard, the recruit must meet a certain amount of requirements. He must be a Swiss citizen, Catholic. He must have a professional degree or a high school diploma. He must have completed basic training, be unmarried, and at least 174 centimeters tall. The Pontifical Swiss Guard. All right, I need to ch check my height real quick. Okay, so 174, um, that's about 68 and a half inches. So that's that's pretty standard. Um, I, I'd say 5'9 is about standard and that's 69 inches. So, okay, so that's not too bad. I thought you had to be like six foot or, or above because I know with the, um, uh, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, I think you need to be a little bit taller for that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, 5'9", that's not too bad. But yeah, Swiss citizen, unmarried, Catholic, a lot of these make sense. It's basically just so they can actually prove their devotion, especially being around such a religious leader. It all sort of makes sense. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty interesting to check out. Um, I don't know how their basic training is. It doesn't really go too in-depth, but I imagine it's nothing too crazy uh, just for... The nature of the duty, obviously, they're not like a deployable force, but uh, I'm sure they, they cover their bases pretty well. ...is responsible for the Holy Father and his residence's safety. In addition, they deal with safety issues during Sede Vacante, a period of vacancy of the Holy See, waiting for the new Pope to be elected. Furthermore, we follow the Holy Father in his journeys, both in Italy and abroad. We carry out security controls at the Vatican's four main entryways. At the same time, we take care of the honor duty to give heads of state and ambassadors an adequate reception. When a personality meets the Pope and we give him or her a reception, we don't know what happens between them due to professional reasons, yet we realize we are part of history. Whatever they put into writing, we will be part of it. So it seems a little bit strange to me. Uh, I figured they would be a little bit more, like, obviously they're trusted individuals, but I guess just for the, the nature of the actual uh, professional relationship with the Pope, they don't have them uh, actually sit in on any meetings. So that's interesting. Uh, I guess even with a certain level of, of trust, you, you don't really need to be involved in, in everything. Uh, is, is their mindset it seems like but it's cool it seems like they can go to a bunch of different places they're not just stuck in the Vatican they can travel around and uh, meet these high profile these other high high profile individuals from like other countries and everything but you can see there's also the less glamorous parts of of them actually working the camera systems and sort of working their their guard duties so I mean that that's pretty much hard to avoid in any sort of military service or, or units but um, yeah interesting uh, I wonder how much they actually enjoy doing it though. It seems like it seems like something you need to be pretty committed to to actually go into. So I imagine they have a pretty good motivation while they're in there. The Pontifical Swiss Guard has been in existence since 1506. It is the oldest and smallest army in the world. New guards are sworn in on the 6th of May every year. Without a doubt, it is the most important moment of their career as Pontifical Swiss Guards. When I got to the Vatican as a Pontifical Swiss Guard, I immediately realized I entered a unique world. And the day of my oath was one of the most beautiful days of my life. From that moment on, 
I felt completely integrated in this illustrious corps. We also arranged several tours. This year we're going to the Holy Land. Culture is very important and Italy, of course, can offer a lot. I respect the Pope. I feel that the Holy Spirit acts in him and his faith affects me deeply. Serving the Holy Father makes me very happy and proud. The Pontifical Swiss Guard is an unparalleled life experience. If you love anything extraordinary, if you want to be part of history and live it every day, if you're interested in the Pontifical Swiss Guard, join us. So I would say I'm not um, as religious as I could be to appreciate this as much as, as they probably do. But yeah, you can see they're very, they're very committed. They're obviously very motivated to be in such, such an important role, being around such an important individual. Uh, I, I mean, it makes sense, especially if they're really strong, uh, they have a really strong faith or they're really religious. It definitely makes sense that they're going to be very committed to it. So that's, that's pretty solid how they get the, like the right individuals to actually do it. But yeah, they have a good motivation, um, decent training. So I guess that's pretty much as, as good as you can ask for, for a, a guard force. Main thing is just having the, the trust between the Pope and then his actual guard force to, to make sure that they actually care to do it. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, it is a little bit different again, cause it's more of, it's like ceremonial, but at the same time it's, it's built off of religion and it's got a very rich history. So a little bit different from the, the other stuff that we've checked out, but I can definitely appreciate how professional they actually handle themselves, uh, especially in such a, a religious role. It's, it's very interesting to see. Um, again, I, I don't think I can really appreciate it as much, but I can definitely respect their professionalism. Um, but I'm not sure if there's uh, any other roles like this you can really uh, consider. Now, I know there's obviously like, there's obviously special security services for uh, other high profile individuals like Secret Service or what have you. Um, but again, it, it's a little bit different. It's not a ceremonial for them. And it's also not a really religion, religion based. So I'm not sure if there's any other uh, units like this or any other militaries or guard forces. So if y'all can think of any other ones, it's cool to see that sort of religion and uh, history dynamic put into such a, an interesting uh, guard force, but still very cool. I can, I can appreciate how dedicated they are. I mean, in any sort of military force, if you're, if you have people who are dedicated enough to the actual mission, then, I mean, that's really all you can ask for. Um, and again, the pro the training doesn't need to be super high speed for what they're doing. Uh, obviously they have the police force to help them and everything, but yeah, cool. Uh, if you guys didn't know about this guard force, uh, feel free to leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, I thought it was very interesting and very enjoyable to watch this. Pretty cool. Uh, if you have any other recommendations, feel free to send them my way. It's really cool to check out these different sort of military units very different from stuff you'd find in the United States, but that's that's the cool thing about these these European forces, especially because uh, obviously Europe has a much richer and longer history than the United States does. So uh, it's very cool to see how that all comes into play. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I definitely did. It was uh, really really cool to check out. But yeah, let me know what you think, and I'll see y'all in the next video.